Hey everybody, Mike Carlson here again, uh, continuing in our series for the Vault Do-It-Yourself project. Guys, at this point, you guys should have gone through four videos, uh, one talking about what the project is, and the other three basically covering how to get this installed on your server, and you know what server configurations you should have, restoring the backup into your server, uh, again, kind of all getting you the back end ready from a server side so that your Vault clients, your users, your CAD people can now have access and get in the Vault and be able to use it. So this next step is to talk about that access, talk about the configuration and how you would use it. Review here is we'll talk about uh, how to log in, um, usernames, passwords, servers, databases, etc. You'll see all that in a minute. Um, and uh, what you know what's needed in that login. Um, once we're logged in, we'll browse around, kind of look at the vault, uh, navigating around, understand uh, where the different things are, some different functions are like searching, copy design, renaming, and what vault can manage for you. We're gonna review what users are put in place uh, in the DIY uh, configuration, what permissions they have, uh, folder structure, some of the data that I've loaded in there, again, just the inventor sample data. Um, uh, look, talk about workspace and how you use Vault with the term, with uh, synchronizing with your workspace and whatnot. Uh, and also a project file. So inventor needs a project file and uh, we'll talk about what that is in Vault and, and how to get it. So I'm gonna flip over to my Vault environment now. Get over here. And the first thing we're going to do is log in. So to start with here, you can log in as administrator username. There is no password uh, set in that. And here you're going to type in the server name. So this is going to be, if now if you've uh, installed this on your Windows machine, uh, you know, your local machine, and you're just using that as your server uh, and your CAD station, you can type local host in here, uh, which will defer you to that server. You could also put the name. As you see here, my server name is called Vault Basic One, so I've typed in that information. Your server name, if it's Vault, type in Vault. Uh, this is the database information, so the default database is Vault, and if you hit the little Browse button and you created a different Vault or added a number, another Vault, you'd be able to browse to it and select it here. Here you can see I just have Vault. I'm going to hit OK and now log in. Once logged in, I kind of have this welcome or this, uh, you know, starting uh, splash screen right here. You'll notice over on the left here that I have a plus with information, which really starts to boil me down into a folder structure. So you look at this root information. This is kind of my root, uh, again, workspace. We'll get back to that in just a minute. And you'll see I have a designs folder. I have a folder for content center files. I have a folder for library parts, right? So this may be if you have your own internal library of let's call it pumps so that you don't modify it, something out of the box you buy, you can put in that environment. You'll see when I navigate down into here, this is just a standard folder structure, just like you would see uh, inside your Windows Explorer. I can click here uh, on the left and expand, or I can double click over here on the right and expand to where data sits. In this case, I can get down to a file here. Now, this, as you can, as you may notice, as it start to expand, those of you that use Outlook, it's a very familiar user interface that Outlook uses. They have a navigation pane over here, what we call a main pane here, and a preview pane over here. And if I get out to this data, I can see things like get to a file, look at it, see its version history. Out of the box, everything's going to be version one. Um, and as you make modifications, you'll see that history go. You'll see the uses, right? So this is the, um, technically it's the down the tree, right? Because IPT is needed to create an IDW. That's why you see this direct link and associated file here. Look at where used and that's more of an up the tree type of look. And the drawing doesn't really go anywhere up the tree, but in the case of the part that goes up into the drawing, which goes up into an assembly that has a drawing and an IPN. So as you can tell, this is much more than you could get in any Windows Explorer environment, right? With the understanding of the associations and how this all links. Normally you would have to go use Design Assistant Inventor or, or open the file itself up inside Inventor. And you also have a preview. So in this case, you can see a little thumbnail preview. If DWF files, if you guys are gonna start using DWF files, those would generate here as you check a file out and check a file in. I did not on my data load create a lot of DWF files initially just to keep the file size for you guys downloading a backup a little bit smaller and more manageable. 
Now, some of the features that you may take advantage of using once we get in this environment uh, you are most of them available from the right click menu. So if I look as an example, this tuner, I right click on it, I got a couple options. I can do a copy design. I can do a delete if I want to. I'm administrator. <laughs> um, I can also do a rename. So if I wanted to rename this thing to let's call it, uh, you know, Mike's tuner for lack of anything else to do here, I can do that. I'll just put Mike's tuner and select finish. Now you'll notice it's going, this isn't like Windows, right? Where it just changed the name of the file. It actually goes and checks for all the file associations that may exist so that once this rename is complete, you'll see that, for instance, when I look at my um, down the tree or up the tree, all the references are still maintained, right? I haven't lost anything. I can do other quick things, like if, I, if there's common drawings that I'm working on, I can drag them and put them in my shortcuts so that no matter where I sit, I can quickly navigate right back to that file. I can do folders down here as well. So if I know I'm working on this tuner project a lot, I can have my folder applied there. I can create new groups with shortcuts in it. Now, some of the other things I can look at, right, is if I come to this tuner and I have this tuner here and uh, this little piece and I want to do a copy design. Now, normally, you know, in a Windows environment, you'd probably copy a whole project folder and move it somewhere else or you'd try and use Design Assistant and do it. Well, right here I have the right click capability to be able to copy design. This allows me to take this whole assembly, this whole assembly design that I have right here, and choose what I want to copy or what I don't want to copy. So right now, as it goes through and assesses all the information that's in the background, it'll come up with my copy design window. You'll see some of the things, and I can right click on any of these and see copy is this blue, reuse is yellow, replace. Now I just want to say I want to change the string post on this, click on this to be copied. You'll see it's going to change the name by default. I can simply type in and overwrite this with something if I wanted to. I could even come in and apply a suffix, let's call it dash 002, and apply that to those two items and hit OK, and it'll run through and run my copy design. So now rather than copying the whole project, I only copied the necessary files, and you'll notice in my Uses tab that it's showing the new file on the string post as well. Um, moving files around. Just as simple, if I didn't want these here, if I wanted them somewhere else, I could easily, or better yet, even let's just go to the components here, grab the string post I created and say, well, you know what, I want this up at this level. Simply drag and drop, you'll notice that now my string post is now up at a higher level folder and it's applied in there. We have some searching capabilities here. No matter where you sit in a folder structure, I can type in some value. Maybe it's something by file name. Maybe it's some other data inside. And you'll see I searched by post and I found all these files that have post in the file name. Um, I can search by a number of criteria. As a matter of fact, I can even isolate more if I need to. If I come down here and hit my find button here, I can change my properties. So this basic is that while it's the same as clicking in here and searching. If I go to advanced, it gives me the ability to now narrow information down. So I could come in here and say, you know, search by, well, I know that let's say file name contains post in it. And I know some other value, uh, maybe subject or maybe title or some other I property information that you may be using, maybe even material. Um, you know, you, something of that nature, whatever, here's all the properties you can get, uh, you know, so let's maybe just go to, uh, uh, let's call out description contains post as well and add that. If I hit find now, I've now narrowed down to that one file that has the criteria that I'm looking for. So you guys, as this grows, right, your vault gets bigger, you may need to narrow the search criteria down a little bit. I can even take this information and save it and use it another time if I wanted to. I could save it. A common thing that I suggest people save is, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, come back to it, is look for files checked out by contains uh, your username. I don't have anything checked out right now, but if I add this, now I can save this It's now available for me to click to anytime I want. There's nothing out. I don't have anything checked out right now, but let's test that. Let's take this file. I'm going to do a get and check out on this. Check this thing out. Hit the big checkbox button. You'll notice the file is now checked out to me. 
And if I hit this, I should get that, that path that shows up, as you can see it does. Now the workflow, don't, don't ever check in a CAD file from this client. We do that from the CAD application. Here I'm just going to undo my checkout so that you'll notice it's now the checkout is taken off and it's available for somebody else to check. So the other thing to talk about is the Inventor project file, right? Inventor needs an IPJ, it needs a project file. You'll ha I have one that's here, it's already created, it's called designs. The best thing you can do is when you first get in here, right click on it and do a get copy of this. So don't hit the, you don't need to hit the big checkout button, just go ahead and all you're doing without the big checkout button is getting a copy of this thing down to your workspace. Now your workspace is defined. So if I come in here to administration, you'll see that I have a couple different options. One of them is to define this working folder. So I have defined this, you know, in the pro in the backup to be underscore vault workspace. So that means this folder structure and this workspace are always going to match up. And I've also told it to always use this inventor project file when I'm using inventor. So I come here, close this information out. And one trick that I like to show people, if you go to tools options, you can show your working folder location. And by that, what that does is it allows your working folder location to show right here in this blue. And if I browse out to my C drive and go to vault uh, underscore vault workspace, you'll notice I see this folder structure. I see content center files, I see designs. I don't see anything for libraries because I haven't gotten anything there. But if I happen to go back here and tell this I want to get a full copy of that folder out, which is just three files, and come back over, you'll notice I have my libraries folder and I have my inventor project. I go inside designs, here's a tuner, I go inside tuner, and here's the drawing, remember, that I got a copy of just a little bit ago when I did my checkout and I undid the checkout. So really what happens now is this folder structure just gets duplicated. So as you check files out, it's just matching it up to this location and this location in the vault. Go back to administration here and go to global settings. And this is where we have users. So again, in the user accounts here, I have an administrator, I have um, a mic, I have a user, and I have a user read-only. Remember we talked about these uh, in the server application, and this one I actually had renamed. It did say user edit two before, and I had renamed it to this. So these users exist uh, just as they did before. The groups exist as well for the editors and read-only. And if you hit roles here, not that you can change these, but this gives you an idea of what the power is that everything has, right? So that document or editor one has this capability. You'll notice there's no delete information. So again, use those users, add new users as you see fit for your organization. That's what the user con control panel is for. The last thing I'm gonna show in administration here, if I go to vault, is the ability to enforce unique file names. So this is important. We don't want to have duplicate file names throughout the vault. So I highly recommend you turn this on, which is a check mark on. Now, if you are auto loaded, using the auto loader to load data in, you will have to uncheck this just for that data load. But right away, put that back on. Good. So that's what I wanted to show as far as the configuration goes. Um, I'm going to jump back over to my presentation here. And uh, you'll notice that we reviewed the user's permissions, folder structures, what the workspace is, project file. And next up, the next uh, video is going to talk about the workflow, specifically with Inventor and Vault. So how we're going to use Inventor, how we're going to uh, check files out in and out from an Inventor and get going down the path to, to all the benefits Vault has to offer for me in my, uh, in my CAD world. Thank you all again, and we'll see you in the next video.